So, so thank you everyone for, for coming to uh, the next session of 3CQFS. This week we have uh, Danny Turno, who will be presenting on spin operators, globalization and uncertainty relations. Danny is a professor at Macquarie University who works on relativistic quantum information, special general activity, and particularly um, black hole physics. Um, Today, I'm very interested in hearing what Danny has to say on particle localization. This is actually a topic very close to my own interests. Um, so Danny, please uh, take it away. Okay, uh, thanks, Evan. Uh, it's nice to share my thoughts. Probably it will be more like sharing my confusion about this topic, uh, but that's for you to judge. Uh, so let me start moving. Uh, yeah. So, as always, let's start with motivation. Uh, we know that uh, localized and uh, spin-dependent detection events, they provide experimental basis for particle physics, quantum field theory, quantum optics, and basically everything. And uh, while well, people measure spin, people, when people measure spin, they at the same time measure it somewhere. Uh, even if uh, actual experimental pictures look less pretty than the textbook uh, representations. So here we have uh, the first picture of the spin from Stern Gerlach experiment. Uh, we have ability to, many years experimentalists have ability to manipulate uh, the electrons in atoms with uh, a high, extremely high resolution. And the um, picture and the data that goes into Typical uh, decay experiment in CERN involves a large number of particles, particle tracks, and again, everything uh, like the spin, and it happens somewhere. Uh, of course, um, more exotic uh, branching outs like the direct coupling of uh, spin to gravity in various uh, modified uh, uh, standard say, modified series of gravity and standard model extensions are also. Mm, Interesting topic, and means they also require ability to consistently talk about. It. Now, uh, quite a while, people actually admit that uh, our ability to manipulate things is in stark contrast with embarrassing silence or with mumbling about relativistic analogs of uh, probability density is a um, you know, square of absolute value of the wave function, something that we learn when we do non relativistic quantum mechanics. And obviously, to fully consistently talk about space time events, uh, we have to have a, a mathematically consistent language which maps what really happens in the lab and allows us to talk about things unambiguous. Uh, many things are known. Um, for example, from the perspective of quantum uh, localization and quantum optics, there is a long uh, review. Of Keller in 20 years ago, but uh, not everything is known. And also, controversies quite uh, often flare up. And I started to be really interested in localization problems after reading a paper by Denise Tuberulas and Pondens on their paper, where they introduced yet another uh, position operator. And uh, then it sort of cast doubts on the form of the Heisenberg uncertainty relations in the relativistic uh, So let's uh, give a bit more technical modification and motivation. Uh, we know that angular momentum, the total angular momentum, is the orbital angular momentum plus spin, where spin is the intrinsic. So that's how we think about in terms of non relativistic quantum mechanics. But this is also how we can almost the same way we can get in a uh, classical field. So what we want, or at least what we naively expect, is that when we do uh, quantum mechanics, we just do our favorite physicist way of quantizing things. We just put hats on the tops of the letters and call them operators, and everything will be all right. The problem is that relativity is interesting and complicated. What I'm showing you now, and by no means I ask you to look at the exact form of formulas and expressions that are written. This is a table 
which in which contains seven most popular, and okay, it's not all, uh, spin operators, uh, but, uh, according to classification uh, from the paper by Balke about 10 years ago. Um, apart from expressing uh, those operators in terms of uh, uh, Dirac uh, sigma operator, um, it marks uh, how different boxes are ticked, whether those operators are permission, whether they uh, commute to uh, the Newtonian, or uh, whether they satisfy um, normal commutation, usual non relativistic spin commutation. Now, as you see, that's at least one direction in which we can talk about this problem and understand why there is a problem. Uh, what the Landau momentum is concerned, we do have well defined operators for the photo momentum, but uh, well, we'll see that we also have well defined momentum, uh, operators for momentum. So essentially, for every definition of spin operator, we have a corresponding position. So, one of the interesting features of difficulties is that for each of those seven uh, spin operators, we have uh, let's say the one seven uh, position. The second difficulty is that all those operators in the form that is written here operate on the spatial distributions of the Dirac equation, and they are not necessarily kosher uh, operators on uh, let's say on box space of non-interacting quantum field theory. So let me throw in few warnings and hints. Um, very, a very big elephant in the room is that uh, there's also no hope of having a unique uh, position operator uh, because just on the basis of symmetry considerations, we can derive one. There is no time operator. There is actually no space-time localization operator. Uh, well, honestly, uh, even particles are defined only approximately, and this fuzziness adds to overall uncertainty. Uh, let me uh, do a bit of a spoiler alert. Uh, no, we are not going to get uh, a unique or even absolutely preferred uh, position operator. And even uh, the, uh, even ascribing uh, hats to the constructions, let's say, in uh, Dirac space um, is also not unique and uh, leads to additional, say, interesting explanation. So what we want, we want oh, three things. From the foundation perspective, I just want to be able to have a so consistent mental picture of relativistic particle, probably also photons, uh, that is as close as possible to classical non-relativistic quantum and doesn't directly lead me to invent um, or conclusions. We do have observation. And uh, we have improved state preparation and detection procedure. We work in uh, a weekly relativistic regime and that the only improve and increase. So if something is done, we need to have a good mathematical description. And just from general, say, relativistic quantum information perspective, uh, I want to have uh, a mechanism that given the description of the state and uh, preparation and the detection procedure, spits out space and time dependent probability distribution to what I expect to see. So let me start with the outline and a list of uh, several papers. So few of them are mine, uh, they're relatively old. Uh, then in recent years, a group of Walter Moretti looked at many of those problems. Uh, they also picked up some of the solutions that I and my collaborators proposed and uh, have done them properly because there are uh, a lot of subtleties, even if you restrict our discussion to one particle spaces. And uh, we as physicists quite familiar in uh, treating mass uh, convergence uh, even existence. And uh, in some cases, we can get away with it. In some cases, it requires uh, proper mathematical treatment, and uh, I'll be able to three papers provide much of it. So what, we want, what I'm going to talk about. 
but in four to 10 minutes. Uh, we'll start from quickly from definitions and conventions. Uh, we'll review what we just uh, have to live with. Those are limited quantum field theory poses on uh, localization. Uh, look at bosons, passive bosons as an example, and you describe to some extent energy density localization associated with problems and benefits. Uh, then I will not go to tie you yourself even through the spin zoo of those seven plus spin operators. I'll just pick up a couple of most popular ones and we'll see what can be done with them and what is their relevance. Uh, as we talk about different spin operators, it's very reasonable that we talk about different localization schemes and the only possible way of uh, doing a uh, spin is uh, not to be self controlled operator, but the positive operator of the manager. And I'm going to represent some of them. And in the end, I will be able to say a few words about uncertainty. And as in many cases, it will be, no, the result depends on how exactly we formulate them. So here we are. First of all, what is part, and I think that probably the best definition is due to Bill Andrew, a uh, particle is what is detected by a particle detector. Um, we definitely don't have, don't have a clear picture of this particle, what is wave, but we very well know uh, that uh, the boundary is quasi. Uh, particles have wave properties, uh, we don't describe as wave and it's up detected as particles, and uh, modern technology allowed us to have transition between particle-like and wave-like statistics at all kinds of time. Another one, uh, units, uh, C equals H bar equals one, uh, and I work with mostly plus uh, convention for the method in those new cases. Now, let's talk about conventions. Uh, so we'll have creation and annihilation operators, P for fermions, D for antifermions, uh, we normalize them with delta and uh, energy. Uh, states, because we talk only about three states, are uh, created from vacuum uh, by those operators. They labeled by uh, momentum and uh, spin. As we will, it will turn out that this is the uh, uh, spin both particles and antiparticles. Um, state transformations are given by, described a long time ago by Widna, and the transformation of the state with the labels of momentum and spin is given by boost, uh, sorry, by Lorentz transformation of the uh, momentum and the appropriate rotation of the Widna rotation of uh, the spin. Uh, now, the principal object is the quantum field. Again, for example, for Dirac particles, we have the Dirac field where mu is Lorentz invariant measure, annihilation operator, positive energy solutions, um, creation operator for antiparticles, negative energy solutions, which is split into the particle and antiparticle part of the field. So, all those things are standard. Just uh, need to pies uh, in square roots and so on to set so sweet. All right. So let's begin with known unknowns. Uh, what we actually want? One thing that we might want is a probability of having particle, okay, probability of having a single detection in a space time region. Uh, where we given the uh, given description of the state in terms of some density of the state. So uh, element of the volume, four-dimensional volume is Lorentz invariant, BTDB. Uh, so the space time probability density, we also expect to have some invariant forms. But usually it's pretty hard to get them and not very illuminating. Uh, most of the work is actually devoted to probability on the time slice at some particular instant of time in a particular reference frame. And what I have on this picture uh, of reference frame, let's say, Alice, and uh, a time slice of Bob, which 
moves to Alice, and I also identify that to the uh, I'm going to list some combination of what we would like to have, what we definitely know that we cannot have, what we may possibly have, and uh, also some of the difficulties that are involved. Uh, first of all, we do have a lot of uh, classical expectations and prejudices. So we want to mold the answers in the way that uh, resemble uh, what we use for classical physics or from non linguistic one. Somehow we have to merge it with appropriate uh, mathematical language and the uh, appropriate mathematical result. Obviously, having quantum field theory uh, imposes additional requirements. In causality and vitality and the process of variability that we'll talk about a bit later. Uh, so, first thing that we know, and it's known a long time ago, uh, that first of all, there is no time operator and there is no uh, self enjoying space time location operator. Uh, the proof is not very complicated for the Hamiltonian and time, time operator we get the existence of uh, time operator uh, prevents Hamiltonians from being bounded from below. In general, if we want a translation invariant time-like and future oriented for vector operators, uh, that's impossible. Um, again, not a reason to despair. In quantum information, we are familiar with multiple situations. More probably most of the situations do not have operators to describe what we want to do. We come up with a few names, positive operator values. Um, all right, let's try to write what do we want. So we want uh, some POVM element, uh, which is bound with positive operator uh, to correspond to some three dimensional volume at the given moment. Obviously, we would like to have it to be the combination of identity because if we know that there is a particle, we want it to be somewhere. There is some, some sort of small mathematical print. Uh, and the summary, and the results actually were typically done by Paul Bush 25 years ago. Uh, we go through things that we would like to have and see what happens. I'm just skipping almost all the posts because there are other involved in the like So, yes, we might have the people come to join sets. Uh, we just have a, a operator which corresponds to this. Uh, we can have a variance. Unfortunately, we do not have sharp localizability. So, we might have the joint regions of space. But the operators that don't satisfy the mathematical smooth print are not going to be with zero in multiple positions. Bottom line, no position operator, uh, but only flow uh, Statistical moments that we can describe, uh, statistical moment operators that we can derive you know, in this way, in you know, of files and the elements, are in general not going to be commuted. And the only thing that we actually can have are uh, vectors of uh, expectations and the vectors of higher. What we will see uh, in a moment, it was again derived in the end of the middle to the end of the last century, is that such POVMs cannot be composed from local operators, which don't surprise you, but they even cannot be built from quasi local operators. So that means uh, if you think about the uh, you know, operator built from fields of smear and dysfunction. Uh, so support, not only pop up support is forbidden, but actually uh, tails should decay slower than spanish. On the other hand, it's possible to get uh, parents uh, and sort of satisfy uh of propagation. Uh, but again, at the price, of uh, non locality in construction. Uh, 
Now let me review a few uh, fundamental theorems which were done in the I think in the axiomatic quantum group theory in sixties, which uh, do have a lot of bearing on what we have. Uh, so one result, which is which is very innocent, it goes under the name of three theorem, one. Uh, the set of states generated from the vacuum by algebra of operators uh, uh, in the bounded region is dense in the Hilbert space of all field space. And that means uh, if we have sufficiently broad like powers, uh, there are local uh, operators which would like the vacuum will produce state which is arbitrary close to any state you want, even to uh, the entanglement state, entanglement state that you would like. Uh, its counterpart is known as Epstein Glaser Jaffe theorem, which is uh, again an annoying thing about the depth. Uh, so we want, okay, we don't want to. So we need operator, we want P of V, and so we want bunch of uh, positive operators. Uh, the problem is that if the operator is uh, positive, or non negative, it annihilates the vacuum and it's positive on all valid states of theory, then it's uh, zero operator. So again, proof for double can found in the hard for the deliberate. Other one, but the conclusion no matter what you do, your detectors are really non local and uh, they will have that now. Uh, more specifically, more explicitly, uh, we can illustrate uh, how wide localization theory the and can be used from the local operators uh, using a very simple and nice proof. Uh, from the paper by John Kapan. Uh, so let's look at this. So if we have uh, this dark power, so POVM that corresponds to a uh, vacuum has a uh, certain, uh, certain non zero probability to fire. So the expectation value of uh, this operator is some epsilon. I don't know what it is. I know that it is a positive number. Uh, because of the covariance, I can translate the operator, I can translate the vacuum. I'm going to get the same result, no matter how I'm translating. Then I can just choose many translations. I'm splitting the space in uh, those nice tiny, tidy beans. I get the operator which corresponds to the union of them. And uh, let's say there are n. So the end result is an epsilon. And for whatever non zero epsilon I have, this finite number of slices I'm getting for the degree one. So local, it's not. Uh, proofs of uh, non, non quasi locality are slightly more complicated, but. Uh, like Very close to it is the bunch of results uh, by Hagrafel. There are several theorems that we established. Uh, one from uh, 1985 uh, gives concession to the fact that we don't know how we generate probability distribution and uh, that those probability distributions are not shown. So, what is assumed that if I have a, say, a ball? Certain ready. I uh, have a state, and uh, let's say that the state is such, and the uh, way of describing the utilization is such, the probability of uh, having this state uh, finding something inside this ball is one, uh, or ball, basically, it's almost one, it's different from one, but some exponential, exponentially decaying uh, larger the ball. Closer to having probability one to find a particle there. Great. And uh, therefore, probability of having particle outside is smaller than the smallest space. Now I let things evolve for time t, and I shift by vector a 
outside of what would be the policy of domain of the domain of evolution of uh, this ball. So if this inequality A is sufficiently far away so in terms of T and R, we should have that probability of finding particles in the ball centered on A um, is exponentially small. Unfortunately, quite ingenious uh, arguments based on magnetization show that this is not true. And that becomes a norm because one thing is that, uh, yeah, I have ugly PON that will produce me um, probability density. But then uh, now it looks like no matter how I work, I cannot win. I get, uh, I mean, I don't get probability densities that somehow correspond to principles of relativity. That's really like uh, a big problem. Here, yeah. I just would like to remind you what we do, what should do every time we face uh, face a no go theorem. We try to dodge. Uh, after all, yes, uh, math is good, the theorems are rigorous, but they are as useful as uh, uh, their domains of uh, validity, as the assumption to go into them. So, for example, uh, there are certain analyticity assumptions uh, that go into Hadrofrey theorem. And they are violated for positive energy solutions and the functions that can be built from energy density or just from the Dirac current. Uh, they are not subject to hydrophobic theory. So those quantities that uh, we should go and use for use different properties. Um, again, energy density is also. Quite a reasonable thing, the uh, list of proportions, because uh, probability of photo detection in different photo detection models is proportional to the intensity of uh, the field. So let's look at bosons and energy density localization as an example. Again, uh, those are the conventions. Uh, we will work in one particle subspace and the uh, entity which was introduced to in by Newton and Wigner, where they still were playing this line born uh, in product and without magnetization, uh, was to introduce a Newton Wigner wave function, uh, which is just uh, the normal style thing. That goes into the definition of state, uh, just absorbing square root of twice the energy that we have in the measure. Uh, so basically, with a little bit of trickery, we can reproduce a stronger probability density expression. It's all good, uh, apart from uh, the problem that if we go to space, the thing is non local. Um, we try to build the operators. Uh, we don't have the communication relations, and we might even have superluminous propagation if we treat this wave function uh, and uh, do Lorentz transformation from one reference to another. So that was one of the attempts which looked um, look unpleasant, uh, but uh, that. In what we're going to do now is actually to look at the energy density. Again, I'm writing energy density of a free massive uh, real field. So the particles are the particles of themselves. Obviously, uh, one is I mean, an inhalation operator, nice creation, so you have a type of topology. Um, and uh, I'm just looking at the expectation value of uh, this uh, energy density, provided that my state is given by uh, the wave function of psi. Now, let me remind you the wave function of psi, I just take the psi of p and do the transform with the Lorentz and Lorentz measure into the real state. Uh, and now let's check 
how it squares with all the things that we did like. Uh, rotations, translations, fine. Causality, fine. Conserve current works. Detection probability, well, we just need some power to scale. And here we begin to get some others. We can just uh, condition it on the detection. So we essentially normalize it by the expectation value of energy. That's nice, but uh, a very simple calculation shows that uh, we have convexity problem. If we have probability distribution derived by the summary for state one and mixture or mix it with uh, state two, then the resulting probability distribution is not going to be the mixture of the two probabilities. Option two that uh, I proposed uh, was. Option two was proposed long time ago by Born and Company. Uh, normalize with inverse uh, Hamiltonian and so um, The only uh, change that they brazenly made uh, was uh, instead of symmetrization, uh, add uh, uh, square root uh, inverse uh, Hamiltonian operator before and after uh, antinomial tensor. Everything in normal order. Basically, uh, logic was in for the penny, in for the pound. If I have to deal with inverse Hamiltonians, uh, I can as well deal with the uh, square roots. Now, that's where a lot of subtleties are, and they were uncovered by Weitenberg. In this case, I can get my probability density by transforming the, by using the DVM operator pi. Uh, positive on one particle space, resolution of identity, all nice and well. Uh, and even nicer, I can write the probability density in terms of the wave function. And surprise, surprise, it's like, no, factor two, I messed it up. Uh, this wave function is just the Newton linear wave function. Interestingly enough, we can play the same game even for photons. Uh, the result, despite the uh, impossibility of building the newton witten wave function for photons uh, in the first quantization, it will work with one photon subspace. Uh, we can do We can obtain something which behaves in the same way. We can have current. Uh, with a non relativistic limit, remember it's massive boson, that's all good. But uh, from here and elsewhere, we'll get into, occasionally get into trouble with inverse relativity. So that's how we can uh, use PLVM, uh, use energy density to build PLVMs. Uh, now, let me go and represent, and present you some of the uh, inhabitants of the spin group. Uh, so again, why? Uh, non relativistic quantum mechanics. Forget for a second that we've got it as a limit of uh, We have shown the equation, which is written in terms of the Hamiltonian and all these women in terms of the uh, Even if A maybe is not an operator, an external classical field, uh, P is an operator, is an observable, spin is observable. Uh, X is an observable, so all nice and well. And then that's where we get uh, our preferred uh, communication relation, momentum and position. But that's all an approximation. Let me just scare you for a sec. That's, uh, I think, most of the standard model Lagrangian. And there are no, explicitly no momenta, no spin, definitely no position operator. So those are just classical entities, and then uh, we will go past integrals or try to force some of the integration procedure. So we have to obtain some of uh, those uh, observable operators, observable ent or entities that describe the quantities. In some sort of emotion process. Now, momentum, at least in free field theories and linear theories, comes cheaply. 
symmetry considerations, that's essentially you know, one of the one particle state labels. So that's far. Spin the same symmetry considerations, the same labels. Yes, we have profusion of different operators, but we can find out they are related. Uh, position of course, as we've seen, is an embarrassment. And all this we should obtain when we look at the effective theory in uh, lower energy. Now, let me remind you again about conventions uh, about Dirac operators, gamma matrices, uh, for alpha and betas. That's how uh, that's how Newton and the Dirac particle looks like. That's sigma uh, Dirac spin operator in uh, Dirac uh, presentation and the angular momentum operator okay, on the space of the solutions of Dirac is orbital power plus and those are Dirac equations with positive and negative energy. Now, uh, there are actually several classification schemes that I combined together. Uh, on the left, there are seven spin operators considered by Bauke and the company. Uh, on the right, some of them, plus some additional ones, were considered by Price in 1948. So I'm just putting some equivalences. Uh, in particular, two interesting ones are uh, the Dirac spin operator and the Wigner spin operator. Eigenstates states of Wigner spin operator are labels of uh, the one particle state. Uh, well, Dirac is sort of something which is very natural and comes directly from uh, Dirac equation. So these two are probably most often used. Uh, now, uh, playing from the group representation, we can get uh, four polarization uh, vector. Which initially is defined finding the rest frame of the particle, where it's just sorry. So where it's just a space-like part in relativistic spin and zero in time-like part, and then just transform according to certain rules. So we discuss here. Uh, the very closely related form is uh, what is known as Pauli Banski vector, which is another of the uh, invariants of uh, algebra that uh, represents an ingenerate quantum group. Uh, and it's possible to derive a really formal expression for a linear spin in terms of Pauli uh, Other Oper other spin operators are often seen as different configurations of uh, these values. In any case, uh, those things are nice, they're good theoretical considerations or algebraic theoretical considerations, but they are operators that live on the space of solutions of the equation. They're not operators that live on the state space of the field. Uh, going to one particle subspace of uh, the theory, we get a Wigner spin operator, which is Pauli multiplying the relation and manipulation operators for particles and the particles. Or we have a Dirac spin, and uh, the only reasonable definition which reduces to the standard results to Dirac equation. Is this one uh, Dirac field conjugated, sigma operator, Dirac field conjugated, everything normal for uh, predictions obviously are different. One is conserved quantity, one is non conserved quantity. Uh, but again, they represent different uh, physical quantities. Uh, Wigner spin is actually the spin in the rest frame, so it is well defined, while the Dirac spin. Hopefully, describes the Gerber experiment in the lab frame. Uh, well, it's still not exactly what we want. We really don't have uh, a third operator. Uh, each one 
have to cover its own goal. But those operators obviously bring us to the question, what is uh, the position? How we describe localization, which is compatible with the particular choice of the spin of the Now, here I'm just putting short table of uh, some of those operators, and uh, particularly we are interested in the Dirac and uh, the a uh, few interesting properties is that uh, uh, we can start from particular definition of uh, position and we end up surprisingly, or not surprisingly, with a particular spin operator. So st standard multiplicative position uh, really pairs up with the Dirac operator. We can get center of energy um, and get a particular definition of uh, position and then spin. We can modify it, uh, and two definitions might be actually equivalent if we deal with solutions of the Dirac equation, but they are not equivalent on the space of the same of uh, the one part of the states. We have Newton Wigner position, in which uh, our is uh, will be looking differently uh, the, as an operator will be looking differently if. Uh, uh, so, if we remember our, our relativistic uh, quantum mechanics, a standard position is actually a pretty bad operator. Uh, it mixes positive and negative energy solutions, and that means it mixes particles and antiparticles. So, what is more reasonable is to introduce, uh, let's say, X tilde, which is a uh, So, which is a projected operator, projected on the positive energy solution, projected on negative energy solutions, and no cross there. Uh, I think represented as the original operator plus the correction. Again, this thing is ugly. It's not the beauty, but it, it generates a causal, I mean, response, so causal power. Newton Wigner position. For spin particles, relatively natural weight function of scalars to the beta, uh, x case commute, uh, expression is ugly and non local, and as a wave function violates for that. Associate spin, we need spin. That's all nice and well, but honestly, maybe because I always felt uncomfortable with the realistic quantum mechanics, I would like to think. About things in terms of, uh, say, their field theoretical representation. So, if we talk about particles, I would like to build my operator, the Dirac particles, I would like to build my operators from Dirac. And uh, for this purpose, I pick up one particular localization, non normal entity, which uh, has particle field and antiparticle, antiparticle order. So we get a nice probability density, which looks like a non-relativistic scene. Even better, we get to the usual position representation of the Dirac wave function, again, only for positive numbers. And even better, uh, we have a evolution equation, which looks very reasonable. We can have the expectation of well, this position of time t is the uh, position of time zero uh, plus the uh, expectation of the velocity of time. Again, we we'll have problems with its commutation, but uh, from here we get the OVM and we get a uh, probability distribution. So that's sort of direct position. Uh, going to the energy. Starting from classical expression, classical Lagrangian, uh, classical uh, energy density, we we'll go to the uh, field theoretical Dirac Newtonian, and we can build uh, we can build a POV and positive and negative solutions. Uh, again, sticking inverse of the Newtonian. Uh, 
um, in the definition and in the uh, because some nice properties get expectation and surprisingly behaves in the same way as the giraffe uh, as the giraffe position. So one question is that maybe when you get something that you doesn't matter how you don't matter how you define things, but uh, you're going to have the same type of operator. No position operator, there is position P of the M. For us, it's uh, not a big deal. And uh, if, when you have several different ways of doing things and they uh, inside, maybe this is the control. Unfortunately, it's not. And that's where a uh, question of uncertainty relation uh, is found. So, yes, they can, they, they can be made coinciding at the level of uh, expectations, but that's where our luck runs out. Uh, looking at the second moments, we see that uh, expectation uh, varies, varies of uh, direct position and original position will be different. Uh, on one hand, it's sort of not very significant. Uh, it's smaller than square of the early wavelengths. It definitely disappears in non-relativistic limit, which shows it probably very consistent. But it's worth uh, seeing what uh, we have and uh, how it generalizes Heisenberg um, and relation when we go to the states. So family of states that uh, I considered, um, not particularly optimized, but again, good enough for my purposes. Uh, direct product of spin state and the momentum state, spin up in certain momentum state, and this momentum state uh, is uh, Gaussian, uh, propagating along the uh, X axis with the uh, spectrum of momentum Px and just the uh, Gaussian spread and y in that direction. The momentum uncertainty being given by this parameter now uh, is the problem. So what we can have is uh, to check what happens to the product of variance. And uh, what we see is that uh, so this Gaussian, at least, uh, the Dirac position behaves in an expected way, playing with various values of the parameter uh, and various values of uh, momentum in the mass. Uh, Dirac entity just reaches the limit to one that we expect. Uh, I think of important relations like the relativistic regime. The, Wigner one can be. Now, what is actual physical meaning of it? Uh, how can it become the measure? What parental procedure describes? I suppose that I don't know. So, uh, if I can summarize, then the domain of the link is in the part of the picture, we can build spinning variant one. But it's not particularly useful. Energy density can be used to guide to generate the uh, utilization of your, uh, particles in one particle space, both particles and antiparticles, massive and massless, bosons and photons, specifically, and the uh, one spin on fermions. However, choosing spin operator is really a matter of convenience and describing the appropriate experimental procedure. It doesn't look like there is one preferred one. And therefore, there is no preferred way to describe the utilization. Moreover, uh, uh, the utilization scheme and speed scheme are not necessarily competitive. Uh, uh, compatible with it. Uh, nevertheless, certain theorems can produce things which almost answer our classical expectation. Uh, but not what is fun, but I'm afraid they will be taking accounting. 
the bidimensionalism can be brought in at least in some control of the systems. Uh, Generalization and extensions are many from how it really uh, describes what is going in the lab to what we do in the field. We have a number of questions. So, yeah, uh, so thank you for your attention. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dan. Do we have any questions from um, from the audience? Well, I hope I've come bored a little bit. Okay, I'll step in and ask my own question then, maybe. Um, so, um, with this POVM implementation to try and get the direct uh, wave packet out, um, can this be done in a Lorentz covariant manner? Uh, it's not explicitly covariant because uh, I do everything on the time slots. So mm. uh, I know, that, for example, that I'm, if I try to transform a uh, linear function, I'm not going to get anything which is uh, over. So only thing which looks like covariant that I have to do. I transform POV, I don't transform POV, I actually build POVM according to the same transcription in the transformed frame. Uh, that's, uh, that's uh, I think, the only pro way to deal with uh, uh, non-local things on time slots. Or uh, we have to build a POVM which really deals with the uh, space-time volume. Those probably, uh, those, those will be invariant by construction, I think, because uh, from the very beginning, one, the only formula which pertains to them, that space-time probability density times uh, volume, space-time volume. Probability is invariant, volume is invariant, density uh, should be invariant. But um, I don't know how to do it. So how to do this? So, right, so you don't you don't know how to do this in operational terms, I can Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do it in a mathematical sense. So I think uh, uh, Walter Moretti knows uh, he's working on it. Uh, now, how you can map it to experiments, again, I don't know. Hmm. Because because I have a question, I guess, on the bearing this would have for implementing this through detectors, for instance. Um, is there some preferred frame one has to choose? Because as you say, it depends on the time slice. Or, um... It depends on time slice. So for photons, where it's where polarization uh, is directly related to, sorry, intensity is directly related to detection, and then... Uh, in principle, two different normalization schemes give you uh, yeah, different wave functions, and one will give you probability zero, and one may give you non zero probability. Uh, logically, they are all equivalent, but it's the one which is based on uh, energy density, uh, which is proportional to the photo current, is the experimental relevant. And the other one is sort of more imaginary. Uh, so I think uh, when I describe, uh, yeah, again, I, I don't think I, go, I when I go to different time slices, the detector goes with B, I just have to change the description. But I don't think that I can do it in explicitly covariant. Uh, in covariant. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh? uh, do hi, Danny. Uh, okay. Yeah, I have a question, Danny. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I was I was looking at your um, normalized energy density as a measurement device, and I'm I'm just curious which aspect of the the no POVM cry, uh, the, the no go theorem of POVMs does that not satisfy? Oh, uh, the no go theorem, the no go theorem of um, Heidelberg. Uh, requires certain analytical property, which energy density doesn't satisfy. Which one doesn't and, satisfy? Uh, I think the, the, uh, I think if you go to complex plane, you're going to get somewhere a branch cut. Now I'm not. Uh, now I cannot recall it exactly, but that's exactly the bit which violates one of the presumptions of Hadley. Okay. 
Would it would it be the non positivity of the oh. no she didn't say? Well, again, no. that's why I'm restricting myself to one particle space because we know that energy density is not positive. So uh, even if <laughs> my POVM is super great, let's assume it for sake of the argument, it cannot be universal uh, simply because uh, we can have three states in a given energy density. And that's oh, how to translate it for the group. So uh, it, uh, it has very, I mean, as much as I hate to say it, it has very restrictive or range of beliefs. Mm. Very interesting stuff. Um, there is there is quite a lot of interesting and rather sophisticated maths that uh, people are looking. Uh, yeah. So it's, this is a bit of a spanner in the works for, for your uh, energy density measurement uh, position localization. But when you introduce a covariant UV cutoff, which is what uh, we're doing here, um, your energy density measurements don't really coincide with um, sort of Uno DeWitt detector responses. So it's oh. like the particle detectors detect particles where the energy density says there shouldn't be any particles. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to be surprised. Uh, the result uh, uh, with photons, uh, even without even cutoffs, just different way of uh, defining localization, one which will give you the, the local, the local number density, uh, the local energy density, uh, they have none of uh, you, you can have zero uh, number of particles, I think, and uh, no uh, non zero energy or vice versa. So, yes, mm -hmm. that's really uh, because again, really what it's what we have, what I have is a different mathematical construction. What uh, is relevant is which of those mathematical constructions describe uh, even in an idealized way describe the measurement. And I wouldn't be surprised that different uh, exper real experimental procedures are mapped into different localization methods. Right. Okay, so well, thanks. I think it's very, re I, so, so I think that your result is very reasonable and I totally believe in it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, let's, uh, I don't have any more questions. I don't know if anybody else has any more questions. Guys, okay. thanks for, for the attention. Yeah. It was fun to prepare the talk, look into those things, so maybe we're gonna play more with them. Uh, hope to see some of you at the crowd. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, I think quite a few people here will probably be in crowd, so that would be nice to catch you. Okay. Thank you very much, Danny. That's an excellent job. Thank you. No,